Okay, so this is from Prada Tanata, and I'm gonna tell you straight up, I'm not the guy to go to to watch uh, to review um a, a chick flick. It's not like I hate chick flicks, but I'm gonna I'm always gonna be I, I'm nah I'm gonna be biased because I'm not an active watcher of chick flicks and I don't willingly watch them. So um, I'm I'm gonna give you my opinion of it, but I'm gonna tell you straight up. I'm not the guy to go to to get a review for a chick flick. So anyways, um, from Prada to Nada, this is, this is the story, this is, this follows the kind of story where it's like, you have this very spoiled person with this extraordinary power or riches or whatever, and they suddenly lose this, and with that loss, they learn to become good people. I mean, you've seen this kind of storyline with like, uh, Thor, or, um, what's another one? Why well, can I, I can only think of Thor right now, but I, there, I can probably name, like, a whole bunch of others, but, oh, oh Beastly, or Beauty and the Beast, there you go. Um, so it, it's like that kind of story, except the power here is money. So anyways, um, this movie, this movie is about two sisters, um, who are, who are very rich. Uh, one's played by Alexa Vega, who you guys might know from Spy Kids. And the other, I don't remember the actress's name, but when I looked up her Wikipedia one day, like, it said that she was Kathy from the Lord, no, the Lost World. Uh, the, the little girl who, who got bitten by the, the little comp, the copies. Uh, she, she's grown up now, so, so. Anyways, um, so Alexa Vega plays the more spoiled one, and the other one, the cat, the girl who played Kathy, she actually I have a problem with this character because Alexa Vega plays her character fun. Like when you see her on screen and when you hear her act, she actually plays a spoiled. You feel like you know she's been spoiled by the money. Her her sister, the girl playing Kathy, the the I'm gonna call I'm gonna call her Kathy, all right, to com not confuse myself. Her character, she's rich too, and uh, on the description it said like two spoiled sisters, and yet I don't get spoiled from this character. Like that's one of my problems. Like, is she supposed to be spoiled? And I know they're trying to play her off as the good sister, the the sister who learns to be poor better uh, first. And yet it, I don't, I don't mean her to be. I don't need her to be like totally spoiled, but she. She doesn't seem like she came from money. She, or she even came from, from a poor family. She just came. She's just like. Nothing about her character seems like, she. She has been spoiled a little bit by the money, or, she, yeah. I mean that, that's what I'm trying to get. I say, and the only thing that you know that you know for sure why, uh, how she comes from money like a rich family is, that um. She goes to, I think, law school, or no way, her Alexa Vega goes to, or she came from law school, or something like that. No, I don't know, but that's the only um, that's the only thing that the movie says that you're gonna that you're gonna know that this girl came from money, that she came that she came from college. So, anyways, um, moving on. So uh, the movie starts out. Uh, it's at their mansion and. I think it's the, they have they were having a party. I saw this a while ago, but they were having a party, and I think it was I think it was Alexa Vega's quinceanera, or maybe it was the fa a fa the father's birthday or something. I don't know. They were having a party, and the father dies from something, and he he's dead and buried. And the, so they're discussing who gets the money in the end, <clears throat> uh, who gets the money, the, the father's money, and. It turns out the father was a was a gambler, and he had so much debt that they're they're act, they actually don't have any more money, and that they're um, in debt actually. And also during this time, they introduced some characters. Like they introduced this this one guy who is like the CEO of a company, and he's the love interest of Kathy. There's this one like annoying woman. Who's, whose role is basically annoying woman, and she's trying to like take over the uh, the girl's mansion, 
And her, her character actually doesn't provide any conflict in this movie. She's just there to be annoying. And then there's the their half-brother. Like, this one quiet guy. And he says... He doesn't contribute anything to the movie. Like, he's only there... Be, just because. to Maybe to make the father look like less of a good guy. Because he had a... He, he had a child behind the girl's back. So, I don't know. Like, his character does nothing. The only character... The only character from the three that does something is the CEO guy. Like, he's in, he's the love interest of Kathy, so... Yeah, you could... You, they could have just had the movie without the brother and the annoying woman. And this could have gone on well. So anyways, um... What happened? Oh, yeah. They lost their money, and they are kicked out of the mansion, I think. Or... They were given a choice of living in the basement, and they didn't want to do that, so, um... So... Kathy takes um, Alexa Vega to the to the Barrios and to go to their other family who you know I, I just realized uh, right now that despite their father being a rich man his their other relatives live in a poor neighborhood so I, I don't understand that maybe it's because he knew he was in debt or maybe I'm just thinking too hard but Hmm, that, that's a plot hole, actually. But anyways, um, ignoring that. So, they move into the Barrios, and, um, Alexa Vega, you know, she's instantly disgusted. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm poor now. And Kathy, she's, she, this is, this, this is why I have a problem with this character. She's like, she totally doesn't care that she lost all her money. Like, she comes in and she's like she welcomes her welcomes her relatives and like I don't I'm fine with that but it's like it's like she forgot that she came from a rich family like it's not believable it, you don't believe that this girl came from a rich family so anyways I'm, I'm gonna try to keep going for it I keep stopping but anyways um, um so the rest of the movie they the rest of the movie is them learning how to how to um, adapt to their new environment, or it's more mainly more based on Alexa Vega trying to adapt to her, her environment more, and Kathy. Her story is more based on her um, relationship with the CEO guy, and um, there's and I, you know what, this movie is not. When I think about it, this movie was not bad. I mean, like. Uh, I know this was reviewed kind of badly by critics, but in my opinion, it's not the worst film I've ever seen, and it's actually, it was actually kind of entertaining in some parts, like, I'm gonna honestly say, I was, I did not hate this movie, because, um, you know what, I've seen some of, I've seen some of the, these plot elements before, like, like, this movie is very predictable, because I've seen it before, but it doesn't mean that it's, there's a certain kind of like entertainment to I mean it's I think it's like nostalgia from like seeing these kind of like old school kind of stories but I just can't find my I just can't find it in me to actually hate this movie because it's not bad I mean like were there some bad parts of of course I mean like it, like I said it was kind of predictable because Alexa Vega story like okay I mean, spoilers, and it's kind of too late, but I'm going to say spoilers. Her storyline also had the side story where she got in, she got into a feud with, like, the local, she thinks it's the local neighborhood, like, bad guy, but he turns out to be this artist, like, this, um, tortured soul who's, he's, like, he's misunderstood, and you know that they're going to get in the, together in the end. I mean, like, it is so obvious the moment you see them. It's like that moment in, in the movie Prom when you first meet the biker dude. It's it's so obvious, but at the same time, this badness, it, it you can't kind of you kind of can't hate it because it's like it does the story kind of well actually, because um, I can't really explain it, but it, it's just like there's a certain corniness to it that you just can't 
that maybe it's just me, but I just can't find in it to hate this kind of corniness. So I don't know. Maybe I'm losing. I'm losing like my my cynicalness towards like chick flicks, but. Overall, I did not really hate from Prada to Nana. I mean, like, it was corny, yeah, it was predictable, yes, but it wasn't totally terrible. I mean, like, I mean, I was laughing at some bits, so, like, it's not the worst film I've ever seen. It's not even a bad film, it was okay, so that's all I have to say.